name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You've heard of the Good Samaritan. Well, I was thinking of this story of the healing of the ten lepers as uh, perhaps having the title, The Breakaway Samaritan. And I'll get into it, but it's because this one man healed of leprosy breaks away from his instructions and comes back to give thanks to Jesus. So we'll get into it a little bit here. Uh, That Samaritan is overcome by exuberant joy and he, because he discovers, he assesses that he has been healed. In one way, this man had it so wrong because he halted the instructions that Jesus gave him. But in another way, it was counted by Jesus as good, that he did the good thing. Now, all ten lepers that that had come to Jesus uh, initially do as Jesus instructed. They headed straight for the priests to let the priests inspect the condition of their skin. But one man, discovering that he was healed, halted his mission of the Mosaic Law and followed the law of his heart, of his emotions. Let's look first at what the nine did right. They were going straight to the priests. That's what Jesus told them to do, and that was the right move. Now, they probably did so first to get quick entry, if they were healed, back into society, because as a leper, you stay with your own, and you're not with society. Anyone you had a relationship with before, your family, your co-workers, those are left behind. But this was a possibility of re-entry. So they, they go straight to the priest to get back to that. But also to conform to the law of Moses. And to conform to this very special rabbi's instructions to them. But let's back up. Before the healing. Let's get back to the group of ten. All ten were right in this other way. They were right to keep their distance, weren't they? Because the law of Moses prescribed that you don't approach too closely those who might be contaminated. They also addressed Jesus as master. Whatever they'd heard about Jesus and what Jesus could do, they gave to him in their address to him as master. And they ask him for mercy. So they must have had confidence in Jesus, power to cleanse and heal. They get this right. Now giving thanks, the one that came back to give thanks, giving thanks is not required by the law, but showing yourself to the priest is required by the law. So this one man notices he's healed and he turns and he goes back. What was he thinking? I don't think he was thinking. I think he noticed what had happened to him. He was caught up in the mystery of some miracle curing him. He's overcome with excitement He's overcome with gratitude. He halts his assignment and he turns back to give thanks to the one that he perceives is the source of his cleansing. And then, what an embarrassing display. He's not at all Episcopalian about this. He goes back shouting, praise to God, out loud, not quietly and reverently. He doesn't find an acolyte to lead him back to Jesus. He just, he just goes wildly back to Jesus. He's praising God out loud. And then he flops face first on the ground in front of Jesus. 
the onlookers might have been wondering, what is the rabbi going to say? What is this rabbi going to do? Now the implication of this man's behavior is very provocative. He is praising God in a loud voice. And he is prostrate before Jesus. The master does not dispel this implication of attaching praise to God and presence before Jesus. In fact, he reinforces it. He says, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was not one of them found was none of them found to return and give thanks and praise to God except this foreigner? With very little subtlety, Jesus is equating the Samaritan's return to offering praise to God. And he indicates it is what all ten might have done. Wow. Now I've always seen this, uh, this story as a lesson for us all to be grateful, for us all to give thanks. On one level, this is a lesson for cultivating a grateful heart and expressing that thanks. Do you remember, well you do this with your own kids probably, you with your grandchildren, but do you remember as a child, uh, going, let's say, to the grandparents' home, being presented with a little, little gift for the occasion, and your mother or father saying, say thank you. And this is a way of teaching the habit of manners. The, you know, Mr. Rogers taught us this. Uh, please, thank you. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I forgive you. We are taught these courtesies of expression. And in one way, I've always thought of this lesson, this miracle, as a lesson for us about cultivating a heart of thanks. But there's more here, isn't there? This is a kind of revelation. It's the re revelation first of the habit of thanksgiving, cultivating gratitude, courtesy of expressing thanks, but it's also a revelation, very deep, to recognize and receive the mystery that Jesus Christ is God. The leper, all ten lepers are cleansed. The Samaritan, and there may have been other Samaritans in the group, but this one Samaritan cleansed, discovered that this rabbi, dust on his feet, sweat in his hair, is also God. He discovers this and he gives praise to God in the presence of Jesus. The disciples all would discover this if they hadn't already through the miracles Jesus had done. When he is crucified and raised from the dead, they know that Jesus is God. Paul, who comes later, has a revelation from the risen Lord, and he comes to understand that Jesus was God. And that is why, when he writes to Timothy, he says to him, Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Yes, human, but the Christ, the Messiah, and that is my gospel, he says. That is my good news. That's what I want to communicate. I am willing, he says in this epistle today, to suffer anything because of that, to suffer hardship, to be treated as a criminal chained up. If we have died with him, Paul writes, we will also live with him. It's almost like Jesus, yeah, like, uh, like Paul writing to Timothy is saying, remember that. Do you get it? 
This one to whom we're related is God. Our full security for eternity is secure in Him. That is why uh, Paul wrote uh, to the Colossians such a remarkable thing. He says, He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. He says of Him, In Him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. They get it. They are blown away by it. They are thankful for it. They would do anything for him who had done all that for them. And that is our lesson as well. I think we should take both lessons with us today and remember them every day. First of all, it's good to have the habit of thanksgiving, to cultivate hearts of gratitude and to express it, to say thank you and mean it, but also to let ourselves go. Let the mystery of what Christ has done in us sweep us away. We can allow once, we can't live there, but we can allow once in a while for it to come out in tears in laughter, in the emotion of worship. As I say, we won't live there all the time, but can we at least avail ourselves to the possibility that the mystery of Christ's redeeming work in us can sweep us away. We can feel it, we can know it, and we can express it to others. Remember to say thank you. Also, get into this mystery, this one who has taken you, who is your Redeemer, your Savior, the one who heals and cleanses you, securing you for eternity. And let that sweep you away. Amen.